Hi everyone, it's Mary Jo Snyder. Welcome to MJ Shady Anchors, my um, YouTube channel. I'm so happy that you're here with me. Um, give me just one moment really quick while I get myself around. I have a few things to share with you. This is a bonus project that I have created using the Fine Art Floral um, product suite. And I'm so excited to um, share this card box with you and a set of cards inside. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're catching this, it is a pre-recorded video. Um, so um, without edits, <laughs> mind you. So there may be some mishaps because, you know, that's what happens sometimes. So um, welcome. I'm super excited. Um, I had promised um, to do an additional project or two and air it here on YouTube for an additional project for my from my Sunday Live with MJ because I featured this product suite in my recent live on my Facebook group. If you're not familiar with Sunday Live with MJ, then seek me out at MJ Shady Anchors on Facebook and you will be able to join in my group or my business page where I share lots of other ideas um, that I don't always share here on YouTube. So um, just so you're aware. This little box I'm going Going to show you how to make today. You just untie that and inside, with the exception of envelopes, because I'm waiting for my order to get here, there is a set of six cards and they fit nicely. There is some dimension on them. Um, we're using the obviously the stamp set and coordinating dies with the fine art floral suite and there are six cards there and they fit perfectly inside this box and I'm sure that six envelopes will as well. So we're gonna set this aside for now. I'm gonna share a few tips. I'm not gonna make every card. I am gonna show you though a couple of cards and create this box for you so you know how I put it all together. So thank you so much for joining me. Okay, let's get situated. So part of the reason I'm not gonna do six cards is because I stole a little piece of this card stock or um, designer series paper that coordinates with the overlay here that is called the Golden Garden Designer Specialty Acetate. And it coordinates with this one sheet of 12 by 12 in the Fine Art Floral um, Designer Series paper. It actually acts as an overlay where you can position this over the um, Designer Series paper and it kind of gives the floral and botanical images that gold foil accent around them. So unfortunately I don't have a full 12 by 12 so we're going to make two cards using this um, these two sheets and then I'll show you how to put that box together. So you can actually get six cards out of, of the sheets if you have a full a full sheet. So let's get started. I'm going to come in here with my paper trimmer. I'm going to line these sheets up. You want to make sure your images line up. The gold foil lines up with the piece of designer series paper underneath. And I want to measure this. So let's turn this so I got the right side here. I want to measure this out to four inches and I'm going to cut four by 12 just like so. We're gonna set that aside. And now we're gonna cut these pieces down to five, two pieces at five and a quarter. Make sure that you keep your acetate and your um, designer series paper lined up evenly so that when you cut it, it's um, lined up and it's gonna to work together very well, okay? You can keep this piece here to use on another card if you'd like to, another project. So we have those, they are not adhered together, just so you're aware of that, but they're lined up and they match perfectly to that designer series paper. So again, these are cut down to four by five and a quarter. I do want to share with you, and if I'm able to peel it off, there is a backing on the back side of your acetate, and I may not be able to get my fingernail under there to get it, and if it comes off, okay. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Um, and I see I'm really not able to get my nail under there, but there is a film. It doesn't matter if it's on there um, or if you take it off. I'm gonna leave it there because I can't seem to work my fingers to get that off of there. So what I wanna do is go ahead and add a little bit of seal to the back side of my acetate and line that up again with the designer series paper. 
You may hear my dog in here. And that's okay, that's gonna get covered up. We just want that to be adhered together, like so. And again, make sure it's lined up where it's supposed to be so the lines on the gold foil are over the floral images. And you're gonna do the same for this one. Line that up, make sure it's adhered and you can set those aside. So we're gonna need two card bases and for these two, let's see what kind of a dominant color. So we have some of the yellow tones of So Saffron and Bumblebee and for this one, there's a lot of the red tones. There's a lot of Old Olive and um, Mossy Meadow as well. So I'm gonna actually choose for my card bases, So Saffron for this one, whoops. I've already pre-cut card bases that are five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. So that will be for that one. And I think I'm gonna come in with, let's see. So I have Petal Pink, Terracotta Tile, Flirty Flamingo, Old Olive, and Pool Party. Pool Party would actually look nice too. It kind of would pop off those colors. Let's see. I'm gonna skip on Old Olive. Do I wanna use Flirty Flamingo? I think that's the winner. Flirty Flamingo it is. So those are my card bases that I'm choosing for those two designs. And what I need to do, let's pull out a sample from our little box. And it's really easy what we're gonna do. So let's set this one aside for now and just work on one. So grab your bone folder, make sure that your card base is nice and creased and you're going to add this to the front of your card base. And you're just gonna use either stamp and seal or whatever your preference is for your adhesive. And that just goes on top of your card base. Like so. And now we are going to I just, sorry for the reach in front of the camera. I'm just gonna grab my other card here so I can see how I did this one. Okay, so now we did, we will do some stamping. Let me just grab my little kit. I do have things that are pre-cut already. I need a piece of designer series paper and we're gonna cut this down. That is that decorative um, with the yellow tones of Bumblebee as well as So Saffron. So we're gonna use that on our project and we need a piece of basic white that measures four, and a, four by five and a quarter for the inside of our card, so we have that. And we have already pre-cut from our dies. You can see this image right here. I have already pre-cut that from Old Olive, so that's gonna be part of the card front. And let's do some stamping. Let me grab a piece of scrap for the floral image and I'm going to show you how I stamped this flower here. So what I need is my bumblebee and so saffron ink pads. I need the larger floral image if you're not familiar with the stamp set. This is Art Gallery stamp set. I'm going to use the larger floral image for so saffron second generation and this one here for bumblebee first generation. As well as these leaves, I'm going to stamp those leaves in first generation on old olive um, cardstock. So here we go. We already have our stamps all ready to go and I'm going to show you how I did this. So this is the larger stamp. I'm gonna stamp off and stamp on as second generation, like so. Grab the bumblebee. And in first generation, I'm just gonna do that other lined image. And these are distinctive stamps, so they have kind of a variation in color and hopefully I can see without getting my head in the camera um, right here. Sometimes it's better to stamp the darker color first but that turned out okay because then you can see with the lighter color where you need to stamp that overlay. So we have our floral image stamped. We also need to stamp on a piece of 
old olive scrap the leaves. So I've already put those leaves on a block and I'm gonna grab my old olive ink pad and stamp that right on. So it's tone on tone stamping, but it's so pretty. It kind of gives it a little, I don't know, um, looks like it's painted on there in a sense. Love this sweep. All right, so we're all set with our stamps. We are going to pull in these other pieces that we've done. I do need to actually use my um, stamp mini stamp cut and emboss machine because I need to cut out a few, let me find a scrap piece of white that I can use. Actually, I might need a couple because we'll need to cut out some stitched rectangles for the front of our card. And I have those handy right here. And I'm going to use the smallest one in the center of these right here. So I wanna cut two of those. And if you're not familiar with using this little mini machine, we're gonna show you how to do that. So you just place this. I find that if I stagger this back a little bit, so I have um, the plate number one, plate number two, that's a little bit back. I'm going to lay down my cardstock and go in at an angle because it leaves uh, alleviates pressure on your machine. Hopefully you're seeing that okay. And then I'm gonna overlap that over the edge of plate one. And it should roll through without any issues. I see that. <laughs> funny how when you're doing a video that happens. Let's try that again. No go. Let's flip this over. Maybe I'm too far off there. There we go. Let's try that. Normally don't have this much problem trying to do this, so bear with me. I'm just gonna start over, sorry about that. Um, I think that my um, my plates are a little warped and that's why I'm having a hard time. I did just order new ones, so I usually don't have such a difficult time with this. We're gonna just jump on the other machine and cut this out. So bear with me a moment, sorry I didn't have this ready. There's one rectangle, and let me just go ahead and cut the other one while I'm over here. So we have two for our cards. Okay, now we're good. Okay, and now we're gonna need to do some stamping. Um, so yes, you would need to line up your dies on these and cut those out as well, but I've already pre-cut these, stamped them and pre-cut them, but I can show you how you line those up. And if you don't have a magnetic platform, just put a post-it note on top of it and run it through your die machine and you will end up with this leaf. So I'll need one for my other card, so I'll set that aside. And you also will end up with that floral image. Okay, so we've die cut those, we have those all set. I'll set those aside. And we can go ahead and do some stamping. So the other images you need for these cards are the smaller floral images, 
which is this one, which is an overlay of this. It also is an overlay of these flowers as well. So I'm using this floral stamp and that one. So let's go ahead and we're gonna follow the same design, the same colors as I used on the larger flower. And I'm gonna show you another way. Well, actually I'm not going to on this one. Okay, so we have our rectangle. This is so saffron, it's the lighter of the, the colors. I'm gonna stamp off, second generation, I'm gonna come to this corner and just stamp that floral image on that corner. It's very light in second generation. And then I'm gonna take the outline stamp in Bumblebee, first generation, and just put that on top of that floral image. Very pretty, and now you have that, that's all set. I also need a sentiment and I am going to choose I miss you. So grab my stamps and I miss you. And that is going to place that on my block. And I'm gonna stamp the sentiment in Old Olive. And I'm gonna line that up with the edge of the rectangle. And there you go, I miss you. I'm also gonna come in and let's just go ahead and stamp this other sentiment on here. And I'm going to use best wishes for the other card. And I'll do the same thing in Old Olive to the top right side of that rectangle. So then, I can just go ahead and add my floral images when I get to that um, one. And we're gonna do Flirty Flamingo. So I'll have that ready when the time comes. Okay, now let's assemble this card. So we already have that on our card base. We do need to trim this down because this is four inches in width. I'm going to cut this down to four inches. And then, so this is, let me tell you the measurement, one and a half by four, okay? Then I'm going to measure it to three-fourths, and you'll see, obviously, that's going to be right down the center of that. I'll need these two pieces for the card that we're working on. So we will add adhesive to the back of that strip. And that is going to go about two inches, maybe an inch and a half up from the base of your card, okay? You're also gonna take your Whisper White piece that goes on the inside of your card and do the same, except you're going to only leave about three-eighths of an inch at the bottom, just so it ties in the rest of the, the front of the card to the inside of the card. And then you can go ahead and add that to the inside of your card. and that's where you'll write your greeting, like so, okay? Now, to build the rest of this, you want to grab your um, little strip that you die cut out using the dies, and you're going to add some adhesive to the lower portion of your rectangle and kind of center that like so, just to give it an added pop of color. These are gonna get dimensionals, And it's going to the center of the notch on that green piece, the old olive piece, is going to actually center the design, the edge of the designer series paper is going to center there. And of course, you want to make sure that it's centered on this way as well. Okay, just like so. Now you're just going to adhere, put a little adhesive on the leaves, and you should have room to tuck that right in there. And then this also is just going to have a seal on it. And then what I like to do is lift this leaf up and kind of tuck that on there. And then we can add some of these awesome gold glitter enamel dots. So you'll grab your take your pick tool 
use the putty end, push it away from you, and add two different sizes, smallest to the right. And there you go, you have your first card. Pretty simple, right? Okay, the next one, we're gonna do the same techniques. We're gonna varnish our edge, get a nice crisp fold, add this to the front of the card. Like so. And for this one, we have a different designer series paper we're gonna put on there. We're gonna use this one here. So we're gonna cut this down. Again, it's one and a half and you're gonna cut it down to four inches. And we'll go this way. And again, cut it in half. So measure that to three fourths and cut that piece in half. So now you have two strips for that card. Add some adhesive. And I liked these to be in the same um, design, so I kind of set one next to the other and make sure that I have that measured at the same spot. All right, now we're gonna do the floral image for this one. And that actually is going to be Flirty Flamingo in second generation and first generation. I will first need to clean my stamps. Now we can go ahead and do the flirty flamingo in first in second generation with a larger floral image right there on the corner as we did before. And then take the outline floral image in first generation and go ahead and add that to the flowers like so, okay? And you will just continue this process and I'll share the colors I did with the other cards. Um, and you would just continue the same measurements for all six cards or five cards, however many you decide to create, um, and just different color flowers. So I'll show you how to do all of that as well, or I'll share what colors I used. Again, just a smidge at the bottom, and then this will go on the inside. I do need to trim that a little bit so it's even, adhesive. Wrong card. <laughs> that one's already finished. Okay, so there's that. For the inside, this is for the outside. Again, we've already pre-cut our little banner for the base of this, so just add some seal. Line that up like so, add your dimensionals. And line that up in the center, like so. Grab your leaves that you've already stamped and die cut out tuck that in there and your floral image that you have already die cut stamped and all that good stuff in second generation and um, first generation of flirty flamingo just as I showed you in the previous one with the yellow tones and add that right there okay Grab your gold glitter enamel dots and add two different sizes to the bottom right corner of your sentiment piece and you are all set with your second card. Isn't that beautiful how the background just is such a wow just by using the overlay with the designer series paper. 
Okay, so those are the two cards we created. We're gonna tuck these back into our box and I'm gonna show you how to make this box. But first, let me go over the other colors that we did using that technique. So we have the one we just did, it's second generation Flirty Flamingo with first generation. Of course, you saw the So Saffron and Bumblebee. This one has second generation Petal Pink with first generation Flirty Flamingo. This has second generation terracotta tile with first generation terracotta tile. The pool party is first generation pool party and first generation Knight of Navy. And this one is because I see Rococo Rose in this designer series paper, I use second generation Rococo Rose and first generation um, Melon, uh, no, Mary Merlot. So that is first generation Second generation Rococo Rose, first generation Mary Merlot on that card. So those are the colors that I chose to pair together to pull out the colors on the designer series paper. And of course, adding the gold glimmer enamel dots just brings out that gold accent in the, um, the gold overlay of the acetate. So we already know that we're gonna assemble this box. So let's get what we need for that. I'll finish the cards for my box, the additional box that I'm creating um, after I am through with this video. I just wanted to share a couple ways to assemble those. And let's just get all of this stuff out of the way that I don't need and pull in the kit for making this box. The next box I'm gonna make is actually going to be, the base of it is going to be Bumblebee. And I have all the pieces that I need here. So let's set some stuff aside and grab my instructions. Sorry for the noise. And I think we're gonna need some Stamp and Seal Plus. You will need some Tombow. And You'll need some dimensionals and maybe some seal as well. So, okay, what you need for this project is, now that you saw all my notes there, sorry about that. <laughs> um, all of these little things that I've already pre-cut, okay? And I'm gonna go through the measurements with you. So the first thing you need is a piece of Bumblebee that is seven by 11. And the second piece of Bumblebee is eight and five eighths by 10 and a half. You need two pieces of basic white cardstock that measures four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. So you have two of those. You have two pieces of designer series paper that measure four and three fourths by six and three fourths. You have a piece of wisp, I'm sorry, basic white that measures six and seven eighths by seven eighths. You have one that measures seven eighths by six and a half. You have two pieces of white that measure seven eighths by four and a half. You have a strip of the designer series paper in the same pattern that is six and three fourths by three fourths. You have another piece that is six and three eighths by three fourths. And you have two additional pieces that are three fourths by four and three eighths. And those are going to decorate the box on the spines here, as well as the back and front. And you are gonna need a corner rounder. And I have already pre-cut in Bumblebee the largest Stitch So Sweetly die, the scalloped rectangle, and then the next size below that in basic white. I have already stamped the yellow tones of the So Saffron and Bumblebee floral image and die cut that out. 
as well as the leaf that I'm going to use for the front of my box, as you see there. We're gonna decorate it like that, okay? I also have pre-cut using the adhesive sheets, the words from the one die in the die set, just want to say, and that is using an adhesive sheet and running that through your stamp cut and emboss machine, okay? So we can go ahead and get started on this and you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is to put together. I have some Bumblebee ribbon, one of the in color ribbon pack um, designs that is about 26 inches that you'll need to tie your box together. All right, so the first thing you want to do is grab your scoring tool and you want the piece that is going to be the box cover. And this measures again, seven by 11. You're going to score that at five and at six. That's it, set that aside. The next piece, you will need to start obviously with a 12 by 12 piece of paper because this measures eight and five eighths by 10 and a half. So this piece you want to score at one and two inches all the way around on each side. So one, and two. Turn it. One and two. One and two. So you have all sides at one and two inches scored. That is all the scoring you need to do. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take that piece that is scored at one and two and we are going to do some cutting before we do any folding and varnishing of those score lines. It's easier for me to cut if I um, start out before folding them. So you're gonna cut up on each of the inside lines up to the second score line on both of these. Okay, the outside one you're going to just cut away and you're going to do that on each corner. You also want to angle these just slightly so when you're putting your box together, you are able to, it won't cause you any issues when folding it together, okay? Like so. So do that with each side. Okay, so you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you have all of your sides that look this way. And then you can start varnishing those edges with your bone folder. Okay, and I did say that I'm not editing this video and I have to let my dog out. I will be right back. Thank you for your patience, sorry about that.
Okay. So this is going to be the inside of your box. So you will want to fold all of these little pieces in. And I am going to use Seal Plus on this, but you can use you can use Tombow. Does anyone else have issues with their tape doing that? <laughs> this video is a hot mess. Holy cow. Okay, we're going to use Tombow. <laughs> Guess I need to learn how to edit my videos if I'm gonna keep doing this, right? <laughs> At least you're gonna get some humor out of this. <laughs> and don't adhere that to anything right now. All right, so now these pieces are actually going to, I didn't varnish this side. Make sure you have all these pieces varnished before you try and do all this gluing together. Okay, so you want to come in and make sure that the seams are lined up, the corners are lined up. Hold that in there. I didn't like. I didn't really want to use Tombow because I didn't want any um, excess glue on the inside because I tend to have a heavy hand with my adhesive when I use Tombow. But we are going to work it out, right? All right, so again, meet those corners up, adhere those flaps to the inside of this, like so. Now this is going to, these sides that have the extra panel here, they're just going to reinforce this box and make it a little bit sturdier. So what you wanna do is fold these two pieces out and you want to add some adhesive to this flap, okay? So I'll come in with some Tombow, and I'm going to push this on in the inside just to reinforce that right there, okay? Just don't be heavy-handed with your adhesive or you're gonna have a mess in your, in your box. Do the opposite side before you do the other two sides. Like so. And then go ahead and do the other sides. It really does make the box a lot sturdier than um, with just one panel on there. And then I'm gonna come in and try not to use the point end of your bone folder so that you're not leaving impressions on the inside of your box because you want it to look nice. Just rub your bone folder in there just to get a good adhered put together box, okay? And there is the inside of your box, okay? So what you're gonna do next, you do need a corner rounder. So grab whatever corner rounder you have and round each corner. Hopefully you have the Stampin' Up! corner rounder. Um, and go ahead and do that. And then you wanna fold these creases. Make sure that your paper lines up before you varnish that edge. And then do the other side. like so, and there you go. So with this, now you're gonna want to put some adhesive on the back side and only on one side here. I recommend when you are putting your box together, now let's just say this is going to be the, I'm going to do the base first. I am gonna put adhesive here, but I want to make sure when I am lining up the base of the inside of my box that it is not covering that fold that um, score line because then it's not going to fold neatly. So you want about a fourth of an inch from each side on that way. So I'm going to add some adhesive here and here. And you want to make sure you have enough to, I mean you don't want to go crazy. 
but you want it to stay together like so. Now position that about a fourth of an inch from each side and then fold that together like so. And it should be right where you need it, okay? Now you can, obviously you want to hold that on there. Come in here and rub your bone folder again on that so it adheres. You will wanna give it a few minutes to dry. And then you can also come over to the back side and kind of rub that gently so those two sides are adhered together, okay? Simple enough, right? Your box is all good, ready to go. It's all adhered together. You can fit your cards in there. I'm gonna let that dry really well though before I do that. And then the next thing you need are your two pieces of designer series paper that are the larger size. And you want to, I'm gonna just put the lid on my adhesive. Grab a quick drink. Again, you're gonna come in with your corner rounder because you want those corners rounded to make it look like a book. So on both of those, you're gonna round those corners as well as the larger pieces of basic white. Just round those corners. Only two corners. Okay, now we can grab one of our pieces of designer series paper. And I'm going to use my Tombow for this so that I can reposition if I'm not placing it right because it only has a smidge of a border. A border. And then position that on your piece of basic white cardstock. And you see there's only like a real smidge, like a sixteenth of an inch of a border around that. Reinforce that like so and set that one aside. Do the same for the other one. So you have those. Now before you put your panels on your box, you need to do your ribbon, okay? And then we'll get to the rest of assembling. So for your ribbon, you can put adhesive right on your ribbon. You wanna make sure you have about, I don't know, enough slack on each side so that you can tie your bow. You want it to be even. And you want this to be positioned in the middle, right there. And you wanna make sure there's no twisting of your ribbon, cause that would be awful. All right, so we have that. I'm gonna come in here because I really don't want to put a whole bunch of adhesive on my ribbon. And this is gonna get covered, mind you. So I wanna come in and just add, not that. Okay. Add some adhesive to your ribbon and then add your ribbon to your box. And it doesn't have to be f completely covered with adhesive. It's just enough so that it's gonna sit where it needs to, okay? Because the rest of it is going to be tacked down with the paper that covers it, okay? It moved on me. All right, now you want this in the same spot, so you wanna make sure that you're, when you're bringing it around, it's gonna lay where the other piece meets, so it's even, okay? So you have your ribbon on there. 
good to go. Now grab your top panel and you're gonna go ahead and add some Tombow to that. And this will adhere to the top of your box. Again, with just a smidge of a border. And that will hold that ribbon on there as well. Okay, and now you can do the other side. So again, grab your Tombow put adhesive on the other one. And that will go on the back of your box. And again, it just has that smidge of a border. So you wanna make sure that you're placing it where you want it, like so. All right, so your box is put together. Now you want to do the seams. So that is where these strips come in that you're going to adhere together. So get all of your white strips and all of your designer series paper strips. And you are going to, this one goes to that one. You're gonna layer these together. That goes on that one. I have glue all over my fingers, obviously. And those two go together as well. So you can use your Tombow or you can use your stamp and seal to place these together. There's that one and do all of these. Oops. That's why Tombow works really good with projects like this because if you place things in the wrong place, I'm gonna have to cut another piece of white. So I need the smaller strip of white. Let's see, so that measures, sorry I made a boo-boo. I need one that measures six and a half by seven and eight. Sorry I hit my camera, I am a hot mess. So, seven eighths. By six and a half. And try that again. So you have that one and do your other two. Save myself some grief and pull in my Tombow. And one more. All right, now we can go ahead and add these to the spine of our box. The longer one goes to the outside. Like so. The others go to the inside. 
So this one will go on this strip here. And be sure you're not sticking your ribbon under there and getting it caught. And there's that. And this one goes here. Like so. Hopefully I'm not working off the camera and you're able to see me. And then this one goes on the other side. It's hard to line up when I'm not hovering over it. I don't want to stick my head in the camera. So <laughs> hopefully they're lined up okay. So there you go. That is how you create your box. Finish making your cards. They can get tucked inside there. We can tie this close and then we'll decorate the front of it. Of course, we've already pre-cut everything to do the decorating. If you're familiar with the stamp set and how the dies work, then you should have no problem replicating those images. It's hard to tie a bow when you have glue on your fingers. And once you get the bow the way you want it, you certainly can trim off excess or excess like so. I'll trim a little bit more. You want to make sure you keep enough there so you can untie it and tie it back up as needed. All right, now we're going to put these two together. And for that, we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals. And that gets centered in the piece of bumblebee cardstock that you've cut with the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And then we want to add our words. And of course, remember, we use the adhesive sheets to cut out our words. So this is going to be in a few strips because there are seams on those adhesive sheets. So you just need to peel off the backing. So the adhesive sheets make you, allow you to create a sticker. If you're not familiar, please go and watch my video from February 14th, um, my Sunday Live with MJ replay, which you can find here as well, because I did share how to do that um, using the adhesive sheets. So kind of did it in a reverse, but <laughs> you'll get the gist as to how to do that. Okay, so this is just want to say, this will be one full strip. So we're peeling that backing off. Be gentle so you're not ripping your words. And just, um, I don't want that to hang over. So let's position this right. Want. To say hopefully I have enough room for this word and of course I cut this out of so saffron so we have the other yellow that is showing here okay just want to say so those are stickers now because we use that adhesive backing or the yeah the adhesive sheets now this can go on the front of our box with dimensionals. So go ahead and put a few dimensionals on there. You don't have to go crazy because it's not going in the mail or anything. And if it was, you would be packaging it in another box probably. So just a few. That gets centered on the front of your box. And then you just add your pre-cut, pre-stamped that you've already got ready. And 
this is flush to this and this will get a dimensional or two so that it pops off of so because you have two sets of dimensionals so you've got this popped off and the white popped off you'll need to double up your dimensionals on this and what I mean by that is you're gonna put a dimensional on grab another one and line that up so it's two tiers in a sense so everywhere you're gonna put a dimensional you're gonna do that but just keep in mind that part of this is not going it's going to be laying on those leaves so just doing like three of these is sufficient because you're gonna come over here and you're gonna add that like so and you just want it to lay nicely and I totally did that off screen so sorry about that you're adding that just above the leaf there so that you're able to um, but you can see that there's double dimensionals on there so that it's even with the other part here. Now the last finishing touch is to grab your gold glitter enamel dots and we're going to add two or three to the front of our box here. So I wanna do three different sizes. So let's go ahead, push it away, start with the smallest to the largest and just kind of stagger them right there and that doesn't want to budge like so and there you go you have your box you have your cards and your little bonus project for you to create some fun stuff this will be a great gift for somebody um, and you have all different occasion cards inside from best wishes to thinking of you, thank you, miss you, congratulations. So it's a really awesome project to make for a gift for someone or to sell at a craft show or something like that. So I really hope you enjoyed this project today. And if you um, are not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and get those notifications. So whenever I share something here um, that you will be notified that I shared another video. Okay, thank you everyone for your continuous support and have a blessed day. Bye.